Good evening to all. Welcome to CMF Pariyara meeting of today. We have chosen the topic as Hoping against all odds. Now, the Oxford Dictionary says regarding the term Hope against hope. The meaning given is cling to a mere possibility. Now, uh, we had uh, discussed in the previous message uh, that Jehovah Jireh that Lord will provide and God gave us our life, skills, family, children, students. He knows better than us how to sustain them. Now, it is easy to believe when things are going well but not so when things are not going our way. Senior doctors say stress is the gap between expectations and reality the gap between expectations and reality and one way or one supposed way to reduce this reduce this uh, is to uh, lower our expectations you cannot change reality much but you can always lower our expectations but in time of utter despair we usually give up on God's power we give up our hope in God's power in the guise of lowering these expectations now we discussed regarding defense mechanism and ego states in the previous message. Anyway, there are complex defense mechanisms at work here. But defense or not, or defend all we like, unless God is watching over, the city will fall. As we read in Psalms uh, 127 chapter verse 1, unless the Lord builds a house, the laborers labor in vain. And unless the Lord watches over the city, the guards stand watch in vain. Now, the scripture mandates that, okay, uh, we do not put our confidence in earthly things. So, we may, even though we won't put, don't put confidence in flesh or men, even if we don't put our confidence in the horses or chariots, but we should also be sure or be careful so as not to lose faith in God's ability to sustain even in times of peril. And we read in book of Job how even in times of difficulty, okay, Job has a bit of complaints, but finally he says, I know my Redeemer lives. Yes? Yes. So, now, there has a recent context uh, and maybe explaining this context would help us uh, realize this, how it is significant that it is easy uh, to be hopeful when things are going your way, but it's very difficult, very difficult uh, when faced with adversity. Now, we had discussed and prayed about this in a recent CMF meeting, that a student from uh, GMC Palakkad was not able, was not allowed to write the uh, one of the papers of first MBBS exam. Lot of technical uh, issues at stake, but nonetheless, one subject, the three subjects in first year, one of the subjects they were not allowed to write the original examination. After a couple, maybe a month or so after the theory exam, actually, a notification from Kerala University of Health Sciences comes regarding supplementary exam eligibility. Uh, said something like those who did not or again in very vague terms it said something like those students who did not secure internal marks in the main exam they will not be allowed to write the supplementary exam as well and they will have to join the next batch whatever that means so uh, saying that this order is ambiguous I tried to get some clarifications finally ended up uh, contacting this one student, only one student who had this problem and uh, before the results came I tried to contact this person get clarification from the student. Now the thing is the student had a lot of hopes from their side in that the department and said they will make sure that they will not lose a year but for my side uh, it was more fear. Uh, so I had more fears than a student uh, itself. And finally, the day before the original results, so uh, the, day, the day before the uh, exam results are published, they go and seek clarification from the university, and the university uh, bluntly says, "Okay, you are not eligible for the supplementary or seven-year examination. Okay, uh, try next year." 
and again and then panic sets in next results come uh, supplementary exam within uh, no, 7 to 10 days severe examination so it was chaos it was chaos dozens of phone calls everywhere called it's a dead end uh, but uh, praise be to God there was some relief in that uh, the examination was postponed for a couple of weeks so there was time or uh, we are able to buy some time now I had suggested the uh, concerned party to move legally as uh, might be required but the concerned party was not willing but later a uh, lot of people knowledgeable people I asked on similar issues they said long term there, there are risks of seeking a legal remedy and hence not to think of it at this moment of time again approach the VC via the students union there also uh, university will not budge so it's a single person a single person's issue at stake but university was adamant on not budging even though actually the notification came much after the actual exam and uh, supplementary exam started and uh, maybe after a week or so there was just three days before the uh, actual paper of the concerned subject initial two days it was other subject final five there was a final subject and three days before the concern had contacted this concerned student but they replied they're still waiting said they were still waiting <laughs> i don't know whether they are hopeful or not and after that after three days i did not even dare to ask i did not have the courage to ask again because i had also given up hoping for a better outcome now praise be to god uh, later found out uh, i think a couple of days back that uh, the last minute this uh, student was allowed to write the exam and i believe they did well also so a uh, very difficult scenario was averted and I had um, put the thanksgiving in a group as well. Now, let us read Genesis chapter 18, verse 32 to 33. Finally, Abraham said, May the Lord be, not be angry, but let me speak once more. Suppose ten are found there. Meaning, uh, ten, righteous, ten righteous men are found in the city, whom the Lord was about to destroy, that city. And Lord answered, On account of the ten, I will not destroy it. When the Lord had finished speaking with Abraham, he departed and Abraham returned home. Now, it so starts with Abraham asking, Lord, will you spare the city if there are 50, then 40, 30. Finally, even Abraham did not go below 10. Go below 10. But, yes, and now, in the light of the what the Lord, our Lord has done for us in the light of the scriptures, James chapter 2 verse 13, mercy triumphs over judgment, we are able to hope against all hope. Now, see, dear brothers and sisters, even death row convicts, okay, uh, for whatsoever reason they are convicted and uh, death penalty is awarded by the court, even the death row convicts still hope for a presidential pardon. Um, presidential pardon, especially uh, this sensational cases they take maybe decades decades to get a decision so pardon a sensational pardon would mean they might be let off or at least the change of imprisonment or from death penalty to just life term imprisonment see even if death row convicts themselves have some hope for a pardon how much more should the followers of Christ hope that the Lord will deliver may be able to deliver from them from even um, smaller things like maybe X and things like that. So, how much more should we have hope? Now, dear brothers and sisters, let us read Romans chapter 4, verse 18. Against all hope, Abraham in hope believed and so became father of many nations, just as he had been told, so, your, so shall your offspring be. Without weakening his in faith, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead since he was about a hundred years old and that Sarah's womb was also dead. Yet he did not waver through disbelief in the promise of God but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God being fully persuaded that God was able to do what he promised. This is why it was credited to him as righteousness. So the key 
verse, Romans chapter 4, verse 18, against all hope, Abraham in hope believed so, and so became the father of many nations. Now, again, against all hope, in hope. So, that this is uh, how I be, uh, uh, internet references say, this is how the term hoping against hope uh, came up in the English language dictionary lexicon. And uh, so this is a hope against hope and we heard the explanation. Now, there's more than that. Let us read Galatians chapter 4 verse 24. These things serve as illustrations for the woman represent two uh, covenants. One covenant is from Mount Sinai and bear children into Sevilla. This is Hagar. Now the Hagar stands for Mount Sinai in Arabia and corresponds to the present day Jerusalem because she is in slavery with her children. But the Jerusalem above is free and she is our mother for it is written. Rejoice, O barren woman who bears no children. Break forth and cry aloud, you who have never travailed. Because more are the children of the desolate woman than of her who has a husband. Now you brothers like Isaac are children of promise. At that time, however, the son born by the flesh persecuted the son born by the spirit. It is the same now. So key verse from this scripture, New Testament scripture is that Galatians chapter 4 verse 28. Now you, bro now you brothers like Isaac are children of promise. So Again, we re uh, read the previous verse where okay, Graham hoped against old hope, his body was as good as dead, uh, Sarah's womb was also dead. But uh, so Abraham was born out of the promise of the God, and more importantly, uh, Abraham believed that the Lord will be able to do what he has promised. So we are all also born out of that promise. Now, see, uh, this uh, the original verse in Romans. So, it's just hoping against all hope. So that part of it means against all hope means an against all hope that comes or that pertains to human understanding. Hope that comes in, pertains to human understanding. We are supposed to hope against it. But we have that hope that God is in control. He knows what's best. God allows to do good things for us. And Jeremiah 29 11. For I know the plans that I have for you, plans to prosper you, not to destroy you, plans to give you hope and a future. Again, hope and a future. Yes. There are several people who hoped against hope in the Bible. There are so many examples, uh, Daniel and the three, Shraddha, Meshach, Abednego, all these things. We'll be just going through uh, that of Esther. Esther chapter 4 verse 14. The context is that Haman... Uh, had devised a scheme to destroy all the Jews. Mordecai, uh, he was a very uh, erudite man or understanding man. He knew that uh, fire was looming, so uh, he informed Esther. And Esther, by the grace of God and God's knowledge, had become queen in place of uh, the previous queen, Wamshi, who had been disposed of. So Esther chapter 4 verse 14. Uh, Mordecai, this is Mordecai is telling Esther for if you remain silent at this time relief and deliverance for Jews will arise from another place but you and your father's family will perish and who knows but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. Now this is again classical example of hoping against hope. Okay. Mordecai knew things were uh, difficult. Mordecai knew, okay, Esther might be queen, but that does not give her unlimited powers. Uh, Esther could not directly go and meet the king unless she was called for. Esther would have to risk her life if she went to the king without being called for. And now he knew all that. But then Mordecai is saying, if you remain silent, deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place. So Mordecai hoping against hope and literally he had a hope that Lord will deliver but okay may, may not be casualties that's what he is saying so Esther she also uh, reciprocated and Esther sent this reply to Mordecai go and assemble all the Jews who can be found in Zusa and fast for me 
Do not eat or drink for three days, night or day, and I and my maidens will fast as you do. After that, I will go to the king, even though it is against the law, and if I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went and did all that Esther instructed him. Again, uh, this shows her conviction going to the king. Eh? If I perish, I perish. Okay, I'll proceed with this. And so they are hoping against hope. And this is one cl classical example. Now, uh, okay, uh, I don't want to extrapolate things uh, too further, but uh, I believe all of us, by the grace of God, have been given understanding or discernment of the times, are also called to be at least uh, partially to be like more modern day Mordecai. Okay, when a problem is looming, we should, and God will give us understanding of that, we should be able to inform the concerned individuals that such a problem is looming. But we should also have this hope that. Uh, if you remain silent at this time, relief will come or deliverance will come one way or another. We should be giving that uh, authority to the God or the fact we should again reiterate the fact that God is in control. Okay. It is through the knowledge or uh, wisdom provided by the Lord that we came to know of an issue that is going to happen. But that does not mean God cannot work without us or God cannot uh, solve it on himself. It's just that, yes, he wants us to understand how miraculously he works. So, this is uh, should be capable. We shall discuss this a bit more detail in the coming slides. Now, see, uh, just uh, saying again uh, regarding um, being modern day Mordecai, uh, see, dear brothers and sisters, there are a lot of issues. There are a lot of issues happening all around us, all around us, and uh, I have also grown and changed a lot after joining here. And what I have learned over the years, especially from this incident, yes, praise be to God, this student was able to write there that the examination, and probably practical exams will be in the upcoming weeks. I'm quite sure they will uh, clear the exam. Just saying that what I have learned uh, that our hope in cr of Christ's deliverance, not only for ourselves, those who pray, we pray for uh, families of believers. Okay. As I said to God, believe in the Lord and you will be saved, you and your household. Okay, so uh, we have that promise of Christ. So, our hope in Christ's deliverance should not be subject to the earthly logistics. Now, Earthly logistics are uh, clearly not in play when God works. Again, we read in the Bible how a uh, very small quantity of food was multiplied so as to feed several thousand individuals. Again, earthly logic might say, oh, if you spend too much time in prayer, you don't have time for other thing else. But it is a very common uh, fact that if you are faithful to the Lord, whatever remaining time you have, God will multiply that time. You will be able to use that time more wisely and get things done. Anyway, so we don't need to be worried about earthly logistics. And we also, one more thing, we need to tread carefully along the line boundaries between our involvement or genuine involvement in good faith as opposed to being totally unconcerned about what happens around us, what happens to those under our care, or what happens uh, to people in general. So there is a very fine line between our involvement and general involvement, and even beyond that uh, is being totally unconcerned or careless or don't want to know, don't care, uh, attitude. Again, I think it was uh, Roosevelt who said, okay, at a, in a decisive point of time, the best th thing you can do is the right thing, and the worst thing you can do is nothing at all. So we are not uh, called to do nothing at all. Sometimes waiting uh, might be uh, taken as doing nothing. No, waiting is not uh, doing nothing. 
it is waiting upon the lord okay there's a great difference between that difference between waiting and waiting upon the lord and so it's a very thin line but if you are walking in step with the lord if you have given god's place he will show you that clear line between involvement now second peter chapter 3 verse 9 the lord is not slow in keeping his promises as some understand slowness instead he is patient with you not wanting anyone to perish but everyone to come to repentance dear brothers and sisters okay a uh, lot of people believers or uh, non believers they might be going through difficulties but let's be clear uh, god does not want anyone to perish god wants everyone to repent and jeremiah uh, he asks okay uh, uh hey, god does not rejoice in uh, the uh, death or destruction of the wicked okay god wants everyone everyone to come to repentance and he even uh, tells jeremiah okay uh, if you have raised with men on foot and they have wearied you how will you compete against horses so we might be wearied or we might be discouraged by the apparent uh, lackluster response of authorities or initial setbacks but we should not lose that hope in christ yes now the way ahead again uh, i told about this is one uh, incident but there are there is lot of things to be done this is this was this person got a one time exemption like the official order still remains but there is time and more importantly more scope as compared to previously there is more scope for hope even by human standards but yes i am sure that god will uh, do away with this uh, order and he'll uh, get things organized for the same i believe the a kuha senate election nominees would be a good place to start anyway uh, just saying that we read in first corinthians chapter 13 verse 13 three things will last forever faith hope and love and the greatest of these is love so first corinthians chapter 13 is is about faith hope and love but we read in other uh, portion of the scripture hebrews 11 1 to 6 uh okay anyway um, uh, hebrews in the hebrews we read now faith is the substance of things hoped for and evidence of things not seen so faith and hope go hand in hand faith hope and love this are the uh, important things that should last forever and what is faith the substance or the core or in substance of the things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen so faith and hope you know, do uh, go hand in hand and we need to have that faith that the lord will deliver that jeva jaira uh, so as to be able to hold on to that hope and finally dear brothers and sisters i would like to end by saying a quoting chapter second uh, timothy chapter 2 verse 13 if you are faithless he remains faithful for he cannot disown himself okay the lord is faithful and even from the old testament uh, uh, lord faithful merciful abound in grace and we read that all throughout the bible several references so even though we are faithless our lord will remain faithful and he has called us to an eternal hope eternal hope praise be to our lord and savior jesus christ amen